Good morning, everybody. Looks like we are now live. Uh, things are streaming. Let's see here. And uh, we are recording. Cool beans. So uh, today is the day 23 of the 28-day uh, challenge. And you can see right there, we're going to do some hand reading practice today, looking at their range, the opponent's range. And then we'll also do um, the mental game of poker questionnaire. You can find the questionnaire yourself by doing a little Google search and uh, just searching the Mental Game of Poker questionnaire. I did that yesterday in the stream. I think it was a uh, uh, number two or three or the first or second uh, uh, result when you when you do the Google search right there from the Mental Game of Poker. If you have the book, it's the questionnaire way back on page two thirty seven right there um so uh, that's what we're doing today we'll start with some hand reading practice first but i will uh just to kick things off i'll go ahead and share the fact that we are live share it with the facebook peeps and share it with the twitter sphere Okay, so now they know and we're live. Things are looking good. Let's get to some hand reading practice. We're going to do some uh, practice today using some full ring games. And uh, let's see here. Let's take a look. Showdown hands, of course. You don't have to show down or you don't have to hand read with showdown hands, but I prefer it because I like to see what my opponent had in the end. Um, okay, pocket eights. Have we done this hand? Ace jack offsuit, pocket jacks, queens, ace ten, kings, ace king. No, I don't think we've done uh, pocket eights before. We end up with four of a kind. Lovely. We raise pre flop, bet bet call and then call so we probably call someone's all-in shove so I think we can get some uh, possibly get some good hand reading practice in here so we've got our uh, split suits uh, template once again and you can get those from splitsuit.com slash templates it's a pay what you want to pay for them you get three different templates this one is uh, about their pre-flop range I really like the sheets helps me uh, helps me keep track of what it is I'm doing in the hand reading exercise help makes me think about um makes me think about uh what do you call it uh their range percentage form combos and all that kind of stuff the more practice you get thinking in terms of percents and in thinking in terms of combos uh, the better off you'll be when you're actually trying to hand read in game versus your opponents so oh so first off we've got pocket eights full ring game right here uh let's see here Good player at the table. Good player. Good player. Good player. Good player. Wow. This table is full of fish. That's why I love fullering so much. Um, just because this is where the fish like to play. And I think the big reason for that is they're so used to going to their card rooms or casinos and playing full ring live games that that's automatically where they go to uh, when they play online. Full ring. So, of course, on the button, we open pocket eights. Can't do anything but that. Uh, fleet Trek calls. Now, we have 117 hands. He calls 42% of the time. Let's see his big blind calling. 67%. 6 out of 9. The guy likes to call for sure. So we have to give him a very wide 2-bet calling range. First off, we have 8, the heart and the spade. Lovely hand. Especially against somebody calling so wide there. Um, he doesn't have a full stack. But whatever. Hopefully we can we can take it all from him. And um, we've got the pocket eights. He is calling really wide. Two bet calling ranges here. And um, we've got to go at least this right here. He's calling nines and tens. What's his three bet? Two percent. He's three betting very narrow. He's calling all of this jazz. Let's say he's calling that too right there. He's calling so much, we can give him every suited hand. Give him some more junk. 67% right there. I'm taking these away because I don't want the blockers um, to, to block all the different eights in his range. 896 combos, 600, uh, 67.6. Oops. Oh, 
maybe I didn't copy. Control C to copy. Date was a four eighteen. Cool beans. So we got them on a super wide calling range right here um, in the big blind as we, or after we open the pot. Let's oh, just pre flop now. Our pocket eights are a 66% favorite versus the guy. Such a wide range. You can see how we just have, we have his range crushed in general. Um, the only things that beat us currently are one, two, three different hands for 18 different combos of cards. That's it. So 18 combos out of the 819, he has us crushed. Other than that, we have him crushed right now. I guess we chop with with uh, with these combos right here. Um, oh, which he only has one combo of pocket eights, of course, because we have the other eights. Yeah, so... Um, what is it? 6, 12, 18, 19 combos. Uh, he beats us or we chop. Everything else, we're crushing. So things are looking good on this hand. Flop comes 3, Queen, 8, Heart, Heart, Club. Lovely. Now we have a, we have almost, uh, we have almost a lock on this hand right now. Sure, he could have some kind of flush draws or something. Uh, uh, he could have two pairs. He has queen eight. He even has eight three suited in his range. But we still have all of those beat currently. Uh, pocket queens are not in his range. We said he would three bet those. Which, if you look at, it's a very small range. Let's say he is only three betting the queens better, and the ace kings. Right there, less than three percent. He's three betting. Um, we're we're safe to assume that right there. We could take queens out of his three bet range, but I'm good with keeping them in and and just assuming that he's calling with jacks are the best pair he's calling with. Uh, let's see, or the top of his pair calling range. So right here, let's see what happens. The action comes. He checks. We bet dollar twenty three quarter pot. Good, and he calls right there. Oh, okay. So, whoops. We can leave that on. But what does he call with here? Um, he could slow play and call with his sets, calls with two pairs to slow play, calls with all of his top pairs, I would say. Pocket pair below top pair. Now, it is a three-quarter pop bet. Let's see, how does he... He folds 86%. Oh, interesting. He folds, so he's pretty flop honest. He folds 86% of the time. So, pocket pair below top pair. Let's keep those in for at least one street right there. They do have some kind of like backdoor straight equity uh, with the jack, the 10, or the nines, as well as um, if we don't have the queen, if we have ace, king, if we opened with like pocket sevens, he has us beat. So yeah, he could be calling with those pocket pair below top pairs. All those eights. Uh, let's say he's calling with all those eights as well, but let's because he's so flop on us so far Let's take off all those weak pairs. We can remove the ace highs no made hands. Let's keep in the flush draws Gut shots. What are those? Yeah, those are all st staying in for at least one street right there um, Two card back door. Let's not say those will stay in mm, they might but let's not yeah, so 38% of the time he's continuing right here. It is just on the flop. It's it's a semi-wet board, so there's plenty of decent stuff he could have right here. Um, so let's uh, make him continue at that range. 38.3, 274. 38.3, 274. 274 combos. All right, so at this range, once we bet, and then we narrow his range down a little bit because he is kind of flop honest, we're at still 91% equity. We're killing it right here. Um, sure, there's a lot of turn cards we don't necessarily like, but um, but uh, but there's no way we're giving up anything on the turn. It uh, doesn't matter what hits. We're not giving up. Um, a queen could hit. He have trips. So be it. We have a full house. Great. We'll take it. Um, a heart could hit, and if a heart does hit, you know, we'll still play. Definitely, we're not going to fold just because a heart hits and he gets aggressive. We still have a redraw to a full house if that happens. And a 10 of hearts does hit. 
Now that puts equities at 80% because a lot of his range, as you saw before that happened, a lot of those, a lot of those, you see all those hearts on the board, a big portion of his range are heart draws right here. So the 10 of hearts hits, he hits his flush if this were the case, and or if if he had the full house draw, or, gosh darn it, if he had the flush draw, he hit it just now. So, but we have 80% equity. We're not scared of this. I mean, tiny bit concerned, but not scared. He checks. We bet just a half pot. So what I did here was uh, on the flop, I made it three quarter pot size bet uh, to get value out of the guy with, with all those hands that we think he could call with. And then the heart hits, we decrease our bet um, for, for two reasons. If he does have the flush, now he can check raise, but it's not costing us too much to bet and then call. And at the same time, if he did, let's say he didn't have the heart, let's say he just has a queen, um, making the bet smaller, we could get value out of the guy. So we're our down, we are minimizing our downside if he hit his flush. We are also getting value if that turn heart scares him, but he might still call with a top pair queen there. And you check raises to three bucks, good, which of course we're fine with putting in. We have the trips, we have a redraw. We don't need to shove right now, because um, if we're shoving, I think we're getting all all better hands, or we're only getting calls by better hands. So if we shove right here, he knows that uh, that we have a strong hand, we like our hand, whether we have an over pair or what, but he's not gonna be calling with just a queen if we shove. He'll be calling with only his flushes, which currently beat us. So we don't wanna shove right here. It's just not worth it when you're only getting called by better hands. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, so what does he check raise with here? Now, if he catches a flush, definite check raise hands right there. His straights with the jack nine. Um, I don't think he's overall passive and very honest. And this three heart board, I don't think he'd be raising. I think he would be check calling. Maybe he'd be bet calling with a straight, but I don't think check raising. Like check raising means that you love your hand, you want to bloat the pot. It's often straights and flushes. But on a three flush board, is it a straight? I doubt it from this guy who's overall very passive. I'm not going to put straights in his range for a check raise. Sets, threes and tens. Yeah, turn the ten. He could be check raising there, um, which he called proof up. I could put sets in his range right there because he does have a redraw to a full house and he's not scared. He hit his set. He slow played it on the flop. If we have a heart, he's trying to charge us right now for it. Um, there's only six combos there. I just I don't want to take them out of his range. I'm just thinking, would he would he check raise straights but not sets? Yeah, let's keep the sets in for his check raising range. Two pair, not check raising, just check calling. Over pair, top pair, nope, nope. Nut flush draws now. Would a passive guy like this be check raising? No, he wouldn't. Second nut flush draw? No, he wouldn't be check raising. I really think he's only check raising with made hands, with sets and flushes. I just can't see him doing it with anything else. So we've effectively taken him down from 800 something combos to 41. Holy cow. I really think that's all he would do this with. It was a three quarter pot size bet. He's flop honest, so he has a strong draw, which are flush draws. Um, and then on the turn, he check raises a full 3x. A passive guy check raises. He hit his flush. Has to be a flush. Yeah. All of his draws. Oh, so. Yep, 16.341. Wow. Forty-one combos. So we've taken him down from nine hundred combos to forty-one, less than five percent of the original starting range, based on the way he played it right here. I hope I'm right in the end, because that's a that's a big. Uh, we narrowed it down big time. The eight comes gives us quads. We love that, of course, because if you take a look, eight of diamonds. If you take a look at that stack for uh, sixteen dollars in the pot, his stack is only 10. Our stack is 18. We have basically, um, you know, stack to pot ratio of one, stack to pot ratio of uh, two thirds. Yeah, two thirds or so here. So things are looking great. It's pretty easy to get it all in. Plus we're in position. If he checks, we can bet. If he bets, we simply call. Nice and simple, we're getting all our money in. Whether he calls or not, uh, 
you know, we'll see. But um, and he ends up shoving. So, um, what could he be shoving with here? Doesn't really matter. We have a lock on the hand. We have the nuts. But like, what is he shoving? I really think he's only shoving the hands that he got to the river with, which were uh, full houses and flushes. So before that river hit, before the river, he had flushes already and sets. Well, when the river pairs, um, when the when when the river pairs the eights, now all of his sets turned into full houses, of course, and his flushes are still flushes. So he's doing it with all of them. Um, probably just hoping that we don't have. I mean, he might even have the nut flush. Probably just hoping that the board pairing didn't help us right there. So I'm still thinking here. Um, it's the exact same range, 100% of the previous range and 41 combos in it because he's doing it with every single hand. So um, our equity here, of course, with quads, we have done nuts, we call, and he shows us. Are you freaking kidding me? Wow. He shows us queen nine off suit. I took that out of his range on the, oh, we got a, follow picked nipples thanks for joining picked nipples i really uh really appreciate that follow and i like your screen name uh wow we took that queen nine out of his range way a long time ago i think we took it out well not way a long time ago. i think we took it, took it out on the turn right here because prior to the turn the flop had the queen nine off suit in his range right there because we had him calling with any top pair hand right there, which makes sense. But why would he get aggressive? What was the turn 10 of hearts? Yeah. Why would he get aggressive on the turn? Check raise. I guess pair plus gut shot is what he did that with. So there's that queen nine off suit in his range right there. Wow, I am shocked that a guy like this super passive in general would get active that is something else da 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 okay so bb defend queen nine off flop top pair check call turn added a gut shot check raise 3x That's surprising right there to me. I don't want to do that. Wow, how interesting. So i got to keep that in mind if I ever play against Fleet Trek again. Okay, well, that's kind of a, well, it was a good hand. We made some good money. But for hand reading practice, not so good. Failure right there. So now we're 13 out of 19 hand reading practices. 13 successes but failure today. What a shame. 13 so in the second session today we'll do that uh so we'll get to jared tendler's questionnaire from the mental game of poker right now uh like i said before just do a google search the mental game of poker questionnaire for yourself to find it um oh here we go good 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 so this is a he calls it his client questionnaire you answer these questions prior to your first session with him uh, this is the important part. This is the reason I'm doing it. Many clients say, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, many clients say that filling out the questionnaire helps them to increase recognition of their problems and makes improving their mental game easier, which makes total sense to me. That is why we're filling this puppy out. Um, I'm actually saving this for myself. I'm not going to be sending it to him. So, I will keep this information in. This is the important stuff. First phase, second phase, third phase. Da da da, da da da, further instructions, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. Questionnaire. I'm not going to enter that stuff in because this is just for myself. Cool beans. All right. So, Client questionnaire. First, share with me. First, share with me first a bit about yourself. 
Uh, we can skip that one. We want to get to the to the tilty stuff. Briefly describe your poker history. How would you characterize your progress? What games limits do you play? What are your goals in poker? Sweet. So just some simple stuff about me. Let's put a gap in between so it's there. Personal goals facilitative, so share as much as you're comfortable. Listeners, okay. List and describe the problems you want me to help you address up to five. List them in order of importance to you or by severity. Give as much information as you can as the trigger signs and what you believe are the causes. Oh, gosh darn it. Let's go like this. Hmm. Cool. Yep. Um, let's just start with this right here. Let's just start with those right here. So if we take a look in the mental game of poker, I often just flip this open to all the tilt starts on page 84, but there's three particular tilts that I have here. And what's the third one that he calls the exact name of it? Injustice Tilt. All right, so first off for Entitlement Tilt. Now, a lot of this stuff that I'm answering right now, there are things that I've worked through and I've been working through. So, Entitlement Tilt, Revenge, and Injustice Tilt. After I read this book, I understood a lot of this stuff that I'm typing in right now. Um, I'm putting it in here. This is this is how I sometimes still feel, but I used to feel these this entitlement or revenge or injustice big time, like three or four years ago. Um, then I got the mental game of poker and I worked through them. But I'm answering this stuff right now so that you can kind of see what triggers me or what used to trigger me to kind of help you work through your own uh, whatever tilt that you're experiencing, experiencing right here. So like right now, I often feel that I'm entitled to win the pot because I think I'm a better player. That's how I used to feel. Now I understand that, yeah, I'm a better player, so I'm going to make better decisions, but the cards come as they will. My opponents make the decisions that they want to make. Um, I can't control their decisions. I can't control the cards. I can only control my decisions. So a lot of the stuff that I'm putting in, I've worked through and I'm currently working through. Um, but like I said, I'm putting it in there so that you know, uh, uh, you know what's what's going on. Because I think I'm better.
Hey, good morning, Dull Geek. Cool. So that's, I think, a pretty good explanation. Give as much info as you can. I mean, I could go on and on about entitlement tilt um, and a lot of the problems that I've worked through already, but this is the basics, what I used to feel uh, when I would get into a hand with a fish and then they would beat me. Uh, let's see here. Revenge tilt. Oh, oh, oh man. Yep. to assert my dominance over them. This has caused many lost buy-ins and that's revenge tilt for me. Now injustice tilt, definitely. Um, Just some random hand, ace ace versus nine seven suited. Now ace ace versus nine seven suited, if we think about the equities right there, ace ace should win roughly 74% of the time. Whoops. So, oh, nine seven suited, 79% of the time. Yep, yep, yep. I could go on a little bit more when it comes to Injustice Tilt, but um, just reading his book, these are the three 
uh, three forms of tilt that I suffer from the most. Mistake tilt isn't a big one, but I know mistake tilt is big for others. Um, and then the other ones were like hate losing tilt. And I do hate losing, but I think that if I lose, like for example, let's say I have pocket tens and my opponent has pocket jacks and I end up losing, that's easier to stomach than if I had the jacks and he had the tens for me. Yeah, so what else were they here? Oh, running bad tilt is not, that can get me, but it's not that bad. I think everybody's susceptible to any form of tilt, but there's, I imagine for most people, there is between one and three that's the worst. Um, yeah, mistake tilt, not so bad. Hate losing tilt and desperation tilt, not so much. It's these three. These are my, uh, my tilt issues here. Focus at the tables. Very simple. Scene. Yep, that is another issue of mine. Focus at the tables. Cool deal. So what have you tried to do to fix any of this, these issues? What level of success have you had? I've read the mental game of poker and implemented warm-ups. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, oh, not started. I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, I, I think I started meditating three years ago. Yep, what level? So, if I were to grade my tilt control, uh, hey, 13 ag 13, thanks for following. Bag 13 is often B. So bag B, maybe Bilbo Baggins. Um, if I were to grade the progress of my tilt control from the start until now, I'd say I'm at a seven out of 10. Feels right. Yep, seven out of 10 feels right right there. Um,
but I'm much better about um, uh, okay that's it mentally preparing myself for the so wheat yep so what have you tried good think that right there so tilt is always uh, for for most people, I would imagine, at least for me for sure, but for most people, I would imagine that tilt is something that you're always working on and working to try to avoid, you know. Do factors outside of poker ever affect your play? If yes, how? Does poker ever negatively impact your life? If yes, how? Um, yes. Let's go like this here. Uh, yes, factors outside of Now I would recommend if anybody's uh oh take care uh dull geek have a good say session po yeah thank you very much dull geek um have a good day at work so uh for all of you if you're you know currently watching this right now as I'm answering go ahead and you know google grab this sheet for yourself and answer them along with me you know um don't just watch me as I'm answering you know think about this stuff for yourself and get to work baby uh, yes factors outside but if I have a ton of stuff going on that I don't play as well because I'm constantly thinking about whatever is stressing me I also outside of poker affect me let's see uh, what else so when I finally get the opportunity to play I try to make up for lost time and open too many tables I still do it to get a lot of hands in um, how else do things outside of poker affect me that's it really Why do you play poker? What motivates? Why you love it? What do you get out of it? Um, concept isn't right. The right word. 
I play poker because I enjoy the, um, I guess the, So wheat. Three to five biggest distractions. Okay. There we go. No, number. Ah, fine.
how do I say this? Random other stuff going on, having lots of outside commitments and unfinished commitments, especially keeps my pulls at my attention. So I'm hmm, okay. Good. How do you decide when to play? Do you have set times or is it flexible or random? Ah, oh, nice. Okay. Describe what you do before you play. How do you warm up if you do? Good, good. to help me You did, 609. Very nice.
Cool deal. So that's for the most part what my warm up includes. Sometimes. Oh, meditation. Yep, meditation. It's okay. I'm going to go pee. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Cool deal. Alrighty, so now that he's awake, I think I'm going to end this study session. Thank you very much for everybody who did this the whole time with me. Um, yeah, so hopefully you downloaded this and started answering it for yourself as well because uh, just watching me answer it sure you get some ideas on what might uh, you know what might be some issues some problems some tilts some distractions for you um, but it's really best if you go through this and answer it yourself fully you don't have to send it to Jared Tendler or anything just answering it will get you started thinking about these things they'll work in your mind subconsciously so the next time you're playing a session and start to go on tilt next time you're thinking about warming up for your session whatever this kind of stuff will be there in the back of your mind and hopefully you'll have a better session for it next time Alrighty, well, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, watching this uh, video. Um, you'll, I'll be back later on with session two today to make up for p missing this past weekend and to make up for no session on Saturday because of my webinar. Alrighty, thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Have a good day. I'll see you in a couple hours.